Now I'm going to say something about the core disciplines, the goals, and the research methodologies that underlie the science of complex systems. What's to come is my own list, but these are the things that I think you need to know something about if you want to more deeply understand the research coming out of this field. The first core discipline is dynamics, which is the study of continually changing structure and behavior of systems. Another core discipline is information, which studies representation, symbols, and communication. The discipline of computation provides insight into how systems process information and act on the results. And finally, you need to know something about evolution, which includes the study of how systems adapt to environments that change over time. All of these fields are independent research areas, but they're brought together in the science of complexity. Complex system science has, to my mind, at least two different goals. Or perhaps I should say that different researchers have different goals. One major goal is the development of mathematical and computational tools that lead to cross-disciplinary insights. For example, by studying the behavior of ant colonies as an instance of information processing, we can ask how similar or different that information processing is to that done in a city, or to what extent is the flow of information in a brain network similar to that in an economic network. These kinds of cross-disciplinary insights are, to date, the greatest success of complex system science. We'll cover many of these in this course. However, some complex systems researchers have an even loftier goal, the development of a general theory of complexity, one that unites the previously disparate disciplines that make up complex systems research. This goal is somewhat controversial in the research community. Many people don't think it's realistic or even possible, but it remains a holy grail for some. Throughout this course, we'll hear from a number of complexity experts about the prospects for such a theory, and you'll probably hear lots of different opinions. Finally, what methodologies do complex system scientists use in their work? Well, here's our complex system scientist. As scientists, people in the field of complex systems do a combination of experimental work, theoretical work, and increasingly what's coming to be known as the third scientific methodology, that is, computer simulation. In this course, we'll look at all these kinds of methods, but we'll focus in particular on computer simulation of complex systems.